Hey, what's going on, everybody? I hope everything's well. This is my first time doing a voiceover, and a lot of you haven't heard my voice yet, so this is what I sound like. If you're disappointed, I apologize. Uh, this is what I was given, so you're just gonna have to deal with it. Moving on to the video, uh, this is a shot glass display that I made for a friend of mine. Uh, starting off, I did a quick pass on the table saw just to get everything to the same width. There's going to be five boards that I need to cut. The long top and bottom pieces, the two shorter side pieces, and a back piece. And you'll see more of that later. Now working with this weathered material isn't as easy as I thought. They slightly vary in the thickness, which kind of throws you off a little. You really just got to accept the imperfections. And I think that's what working with rustic materials is basically all about. So this is pretty much all the effort I'm going to put in into trying to keep these pieces all even. Finishing up on ripping the two shorter sides. Here's a quick mock-up. You can see how things are going to fit in the end. Pretty straightforward. It's basically a box. A very, very long box. The next step is to cut the pieces to length and also their miters. So I'm going to be moving on to the miter saw for that. Now, if you're anything like me, mistakes happen very frequently, especially when it comes to angles. Uh, to remedy that, I basically mark all the edges that are going to take the angles. This takes most of the guesswork away and usually it also avoids mistakes. I've decided to put the back piece through a planer just because it didn't really need to be that thick. I took off about 3 eighths of an inch on one side of the board, leaving me with a piece that's thinner and leaving that weathered side that you can still see from the front. This also gives more room for the shot glasses, especially the, the wider ones. Here's another mock-up with everything cut to their final sizes. And with that done, I can move on to cutting the dados for the LED and the acrylic front. So just quickly switching my table saw blade into a dado stack to make the cutting easier and faster. So the dado for the acrylic piece is about a quarter inch in from the edge and it goes about halfway through the thickness of the wood. Now to ensure that everything lines up properly, I make sure to cut all the pieces that needs it first before moving the fence. Now I'm doing the same thing 
where the LED dado, just trying my best to keep it kind of centered on the piece. I'm setting the blade height to less than a quarter of an inch and an inch and a half from the same edge that was riding the fence. Now here I actually messed up and cut dados on the sides. Originally we, I just wanted the LEDs to be in the top and the bottom but this kind of made it easier to wire everything and I'll explain more in a bit. Now that each piece has been through the table saw once, I'll nudge the fence and then run everything again until the LED fits. So as you can see, I made two plugs for the mistakes that I've made. Uh, I'm just gonna be wiring the data on one side. So this piece, I'm just gonna cap off and fix the mistake. I cut deeper dados on the piece that's going to have the LED run through it. I'm going to run the LEDs from the bottom to one side and I'll go all around the top. So this side is just going to have a plug and it's going to be friction fit. You can see how this plug blocks all the light coming from the side, making it look like the lights are just coming from the top and bottom, which is what I originally wanted. The last thing that I need to do before gluing everything up is to drill an exit hole for the LED so I can have a clean shot glass display with no wiring visible. I needed to cut this end a little deeper just so I can have the dado match the depth of the hole that I just drilled. So I set up a stop block on the table saw to make it easier and more accurate. Here you can see how nicely it just kind of pokes out in the end. And with all that finished, I can finally start gluing everything up. I'm only joining the three sides and the back piece together and use that smaller side as a removable cap so I can slide the acrylic piece out and have access to the shot glasses. Now this took a little bit of time just because all the pieces were not super perfect. So I used some glue, clamps, and also some little brad nails just to make sure everything at least comes out relatively straight.
Now while that thing is taking its sweet ass time to dry, I went ahead and cut the acrylic front out of some scrap acrylic on the panel saw. With the acrylic piece fitting nicely, I can move on to the removable cap. And I wanted to use magnets to secure everything together, but I wasn't sure how to line them up properly. I ended up just marking the one side with some red paint and then carefully press it up against the display and transferring the marks. This ended up working, but I'm pretty sure there's probably a better way to do this. And if you know of one, definitely let me know. Once the shallow holes were drilled, I went ahead and marked one side of my magnets and I think it was the positive side just to avoid putting them on backwards. Again with uh, making mistakes, it happens too often so I make sure I'm careful. <laughs> I did a little test with using super glue or hot glue and the hot glue worked way better so I just went ahead and hot glued all the magnets to their rightful places. Now for the exciting part. I can finally attach this sick LED. It has a nice gel coating on it and the adhesive is pretty decent but I've actually never seen an LED strip with like really good adhesive back. So uh, in some parts uh, I went back with some hot glue just to make sure it doesn't fall off on me. And you can see here how the strip goes from the side and how the plug works just in case there's some faults in the LED we can replace it and here we go moment of truth and bam it's so nice this LED strip is actually one of the better ones out there and one more final test with all the parts together before mounting it to the wall so my friend Ricky took it home and mounted it to his beautiful wine rack wall. I'm trying to convince him to start his own YouTube channel. He's probably one of the more creative ones and also one of the more busier ones, so I'm not sure how that's gonna work. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna leave you with Ricky filling his shot glass display and I wanna thank all of you for watching and I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks.